Good day, my schoolers. Welcome to my school channel. My name is Alexandra. Right here in this channel, we'll be tackling the general past question for the subject government year 2014. Please stay with us, do not go anyway, and we'll be right back. My school channel so right now we'll be tackling question 1 to 24. now let's begin with question one the necessary attributes of a state are option a definite territory population sovereignty and government option b police army sovereignty and custom option c resources population sovereignty and government option d sovereignty police army and immigration the answer to this question is option a why because option a define what a state uh, should have okay should have a defined territory a particular place it, sh it should have population that is a group of people it should have sovereignty supreme power and authority and a government that is a system so option a therefore is the correct answer to this question question two the process of taking part in political and public affairs can be termed political option a participation option b socialization option c recognition option d culture the answer to this question is participation why because it has to do with taking part that is involving yourself in political activity now the answer is political participation therefore option a is the correct answer to this question but then uh, political socialization has to do with acquiring acquiring political belief value attitude that shape a person's political behavior when we talk about political culture it has to do with the way members of a political party behave in political activity okay so the answer to this question in some is option a political participation question three membership of a society is option a voluntary option b constitutional option c conventional option d mandatory the answer to this question is voluntary so membership of a society being a member of a society is voluntary is a choice you choose to do it if you want to be you choose to be involved in a society if you want to do not forget society is a group of people who come together for a purpose we have various examples of society family can be a society club fraternities professional organizations all of these are examples of society it is not constitutional constitutional in this case will mean that okay it is written in the constitution it is in the constitution to be a member of a society conventional meaning it's a general norm okay it's, it's generally done or generally believed to okay be accepted okay mandatory mandatory will mean it's a must for you to do it so the answer to this question is option a voluntary because be, being a member of a society should be voluntary it should be a choice so option a therefore is the correct answer to this question Question 4. In a democratic political system, the political sovereign is usually D, option A, electorate, option B, legislature, option C, constitution, option D, political parties. The answer to this question is electorate. Electorate simply means the people. And do not forget that in a democratic political system, it's all about the people. Okay, so the people have the power, the people exercise power, power is vested on the people, um, the supreme power and authority is on the people. So the answer to this question is option A, electorate. Question 5. One basic feature of a monarchical form of government is that option A, succession is true, heredity, option B, the ruler has a fixed tenure, option C, separation of powers is absolute, option D, members of the executive are elected. The answer to this question is option A. When we talk about a monarchical system, we know that it involves two types. Okay, we have the constitutional monarchy, which is subjected to legal limitation it is not hereditary but then when we talk about absolute monarchy it is hereditary and it is not subjected to legal limitation so however when you think of a monarchy the normal type is the absolute monarchy that is the one that is done through heredity okay the succession is through hereditary so the hereditary uh, monarchy should be the normal type so when you have questions like this and you cannot place your hand in uh, on the particular type of monarchy they're talking about you should think of um, absolute monarchy as the original or the normal type of monarchy okay so succession in the absolute monarchy is through heredity so option a therefore is the correct answer to this question 
Question 6. One main advantage of bicameral legislature is that it, option A, is less cumbersome to pass bills. Option B is not easy to manipulate bills. Option C makes for quick deliberation during emergencies. Option D make passage of bills easy. The answer to this question is option B is not easy to manipulate bills. Okay, now let's talk about bicameral legislature. Okay, this is a type of legislature in which um, the legislative functions are carried out by two chambers in a country, two chambers or two houses in a country. Now, this allows for thoroughness, of a bill. it gives room for thoroughness of a bill. So when a bill is passed, okay, it is examined, debated by the two houses. So it becomes hard to manipulate the bill or to be sentimental about it, okay. It makes it very hard to do anything about it. So they deliberate, they debate, they examine the bill before making it a law. So the answer to this question is option B, it's not easy to manipulate bills. Question 7. The court that has unlimited power to interpret the constitution is the option A, I court, option B, court of appeal, option C, supreme court, option D, magistrate court. The answer to this question is supreme court. Why? Because within the article of court in any legal jurisdiction, we see that the highest court is the supreme court and this court has the power to interpret the constitution. So therefore, option C is the correct answer to this question. Question 8. Unitary system of government is more suitable to a country, option A, with a robust and dynamic economy, option B, with a relatively small area and a homogeneous population, option C, that is sparsely populated, option D, that possesses a strong and modern army. The answer to this question is option B. Now, let's talk about unitary system of government. This is a system of government in which power is concentrated in the hands of a single entity or a single central government. That is, one person is ruling. Okay, so this is most suitable in a place with uh, a small territory, a small area, okay, and the people must share the same cultural background. That is homogeneous. When we talk about homogeneous, it is the same. Homo means the same. So the same cultural background, that is where a unitary system of government is most appropriate. Not a population that is heterogeneous, that is different or diverse cultural background. It will be hard to rule or control. So it is most suitable when a person is controlling a group of people who have the same cultural background just as he or she does. So option B is the correct answer to this question. Question 9. An example of a country ruled by a constitutional monarch is option A, Italy, option B, Libya, option C, Uganda, option D, Morocco. The answer to this question is Morocco. Okay, Morocco operates under the constitutional monarch. Other example of countries that adopt this system is Kuwait, Jordan, and so on. So option D is the correct answer to this question. However, Italy, Italy once adopted the absolute monarch, not even constitutional monarch, but the absolute monarch, and it was abolished in 1946. So the answer to this question is option D, Morocco. Do not forget that you can take practice questions with our simulated Jam CBT pass questions. And how can you do this? All you need to do is you click on the link in the description below, which takes you to the My School website. There you can download My School Mobile app for your Android phones and My School software for your computers and laptops. Please go ahead and download and start practicing. Now, moving on to question 10. The development of a classless society is the goal of option A, literalism, option B, Marxism, option C, conservatism, option D, feudalism. The answer to this question is Marxism. Now, Marxism is a theory that proposed that states repress and suppress the lower class, and so they fight to have a classless society. Okay, so the answer to this question is option B, Marxism. I believe you are enjoying this content. If yes, do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and then tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 11. A flexible constitution is one which is option A known to all the citizens, option B written by the parliament, option C easily amended, option D popular with the legislators. The answer to this question is easily amended. When we talk about a flexible constitution, it's a constitution that can be amendable. Okay, so relatively it is easily uh, amended. Okay, so the answer to this question is option C easily amended. Question 12. Which of the following is a future of check and balances? Option A, judicial review. Option B, code of conduct. Option C, judicial precedence. Option D, judicial immunity. 
The answer to this question is option A, judicial review. Now, when we talk about um, check and balances, check and balances have to do with the power of any organ of government, checking the activities of the other organ of government or arms of government. Okay, when we talk about judicial review, it has to do with the judicial power or the court power to be able to um, check the activities of the legislature and the executive. So the judicial or the court is checking the activity of the executive and the legislature. Now, this has to do with um, check and balances, and so therefore it is a future and it is the answer to this question. When we look at code of conduct, it's a set of rules, rules and responsibility guiding an individual judicial precedent is a decision made by a judge um, as a result from previously decided cases. So when we talk about judicial immunity, it's a form of immunity that protects the judge or judges. So option A is the correct answer to this question. Question 13. Laws made by military government at the state level are called option A, edict, option B, acts, option C, decrees, option D, bylaws. The answer to this question is option A, edit. Okay, so law made by the military at the state level is referred to as edit, but if it's made at the federal level, it is called decrees, and local government or local level is called bylaws. So the answer to this question is edit. When we talk about act, act is a bill, a bill that has passed the two chambers, okay? So it's called act at that level but then the answer to this question is option a edit question 14 citizenship is acquired by an alien through option a confirmment option b internalization option c registration option d birth the answer to this question is registration why because alien is involved when we talk about alien we mean the person is a stranger that means the person is a foreigner okay so the answer to this question is registration question 15 the officer responsible for announcing the result of an election is known as option A, returning officer, option B, electoral officer, option C, ballot officer, option D, presiding officer. The answer to this question is returning officer. The returning officer, RO, is responsible for announcing the results um, of an election. Option D, however, presiding officer is in charge of the polling station in an election. So the answer to this question is option A, returning officer. Question 16. The ultimate aim of political parties is to, option A, increase the political awareness of the electorate, option B, formulate and implement policies, option C, implement people-oriented programs, option D, acquire and exercise power. The answer to this question is option D, acquire and exercise power. Every political party wants to be the ruling party. They want to be the one controlling the government. So therefore, the answer to this question is political parties want to acquire and exercise power. That is their ultimate aim. Option D, therefore, is the correct answer to this question. Question 17. The main objective of pressure groups is to option A, protect the interests of the country against foreigners, option B, serve as opposition to the government, option C, promote the interests of political parties, option D, influence legislation for the benefit of their members. The answer to this question is option D, pressure group influence government decisions so that it can benefit the members of uh, their group. So therefore, option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 18. Which of the following is not a dimension of public opinion? Option A, intensity. Option B, substance. Option C, polling. Option D, orientation. The answer to this question is substance. When we look at public opinion, we're looking at the mind or the view of the people concerning issues or a particular issue. Now, when we look at a dimension of public opinion, this simply means the measurement of public opinion. It can be me measured through intensity and the pe people's attitude towards a particular issue. Orientation is inclusive. Pooling, um, the government can determine the mind of the people through, through pooling, which is a process of voting in an election. So the answer to this question is option B, substance, which is not a dimension of public opinion. So therefore, option B is the correct answer to this question. Question 19. The body that is responsible for the appointment, discipline, promotion, and dismissal of civil servants, option A, civil service commission, option B, ministry of labor and productivity, option C, ministry of establishment, option D, bureau for police service reforms. The answer to this question is option A, civil service commission. 
And Civil Service Commission is a commission that is charged with the responsibility of promoting, um, appointing, discipline, and the dismissal of civil servants. Everything that has to do with civil servants, the Civil Service Commission is charged with that responsibility. So option A is the correct answer to this question. Do not forget that you can ask questions in this platform and you can do it by clicking on the link in the description below. Click on this link, it takes you to the MySchool website there you can ask as many questions as possible and solutions will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now moving on to question 20. In the pre-colonial Awasa political system, the Madawaki performed the function of option A, Minister of Interior, option B, Minister of Works, option C, Minister of Education, option D, Minister of Defense. Okay, so the Madawaki was the commander of army in the Awasa pre-colonial administration, but then this can be linked to the Minister of Defense as the commander of army would naturally work under the Ministry of Defense. So the answer to this question is option D, Minister of Defense. Do you have better steps, explanation or solutions to any of those questions? Feel free to use the comment section, indicate the question and the solutions you would like to share. Question 21. In the old oil empire, the Ajele dash, option A, was the one led by the army. Option B, ensure the safety of all trade routes. Option C, ensure the good governance of the district. Option D, mobilize the army. The answer to this question is option C, ensure good governance of the district. Okay, so in the old Oye Empire, the village and town administration was led by Bale and Ajeli. So the closest answer to this um, explanation I've just given is option C, which is ensuring good governance of the district. So option C, therefore, is the correct answer to this question. Question 22. The general strike of 1945 was caused primarily by the option A, persistent implementation of discriminatory laws, option B, disparity in the criteria for employment, option C, ashness and trade laws as it concerns the Africans, option D, government's rejection of a demand for an increase of 50% in the cost of living allowances. The answer to this question is option D. Now, the strike was between the British colonial governor and Africans. Okay, There was a demand by Africa for an increase in wages by 50%, which the government refused. The British colonial government refused to implement or grant. So this resulted into the strike. So the answer to this question is option D. Question 23. Before 1945, the component units of Nigeria were option A states, option B regions, option C districts, option D provinces. The answer to this question is option D provinces. Nigeria was divided during the colonial rule before 1945 and they were called provinces. So we had northern provinces and southern provinces. Okay, so the answer to this question is option D provinces. Question 24. The emergence of nationalism was essentially the result of the use of option A, colonialism, option B, imperialism, option C, independence, option D, slavery. The answer to this question is option A, colonialism. Now, Nigerian nationalism emerged in the early 1920s under the influence of Abba Makolu, who is considered to be the father of um, or the founder of Nigerian nationalism. Now, it emerged because of the need or the necessity to resist colonialism. That was how it emerged, nationalism. So the answer, therefore, is option A, colonialism. We've come to the end of this wonderful segment and I believe you enjoyed every bit of it. Please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and then tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.